Shalott. Happy Wednesday, everybody. The Austin Bruins show getting started here a little bit late as the Austin Packers are continuing on in their high school hoops. That's awesome to hear is a continuing of the winning tradition here around here in Austin because we've got some playoffs right around the corner as far as the Austin Bruins are concerned. But we'll dive into that here in a little bit. we got a shortened show. We'll be with you here for the next 20 minutes or so. My name is TJ Shalott, voice of the Austin Bruins, joined in studio by my guest co-host today, defenseman and team captain Lane Krenz. And welcome to the show, Lane. Yeah, no, thanks for having me TJ. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate you taking the time today and uh, we're going to have a shortened show so we're going to just jump right into it and uh, you're one of the guys on the team. You, you've been around for three years now. You've seen a lot of things change. <laughs> I w- was talking earlier today, I was talking to a handful of people and one of the things in these different conversations that came across was just the amount of change that the league itself has had in such a short period of time. How have things changed for you as far as the league is concerned from when you first broke in three years ago as to where it is today? What are some of those changes that you've seen? I think when I first came into the league, there was, um, you know, there weren't quite as many teams, but there were still some teams that were relatively new, and there were some guys on those on those rosters that weren't necessarily considered you know, elite level players like n- nearly everybody is in the North American Hockey League uh, nowadays, especially the regular players. Um, a few of the newer teams, like the Magicians, when they were getting started, were going through 60, 70 guys a year. And there were some guys that I was familiar with, uh, not just them, but other teams that I was like, wow, really? They're playing junior hockey. No offense to them at all. But uh, even, and then, you know, just some guys that were, that I didn't know who I just saw were shipped out pretty quickly just because of the, uh, because of the Matt, the huge amount of numbers that these teams would go through as far as players, and you're not really seeing that anymore. You know, hockey's it's spreading more to through um, you know the southwest part of the part of the country into Florida. It's getting more popular out east. You know, um, Minnesota and Wisconsin have always put out better players, and all, along with Michigan, we're starting to see more people come out of those areas, and it uh, it adds the overall competition and um, those fourth line guys aren't necessary for necessarily fourth line guys anymore they still are but they're the overall uh, quality range from first line to fourth line is much tighter than it used to be when I first came into the league and the uh, years before that and of course not only has the league changed uh, through those three years that you've been here but also the Austin Bruins have have changed as well I mean you're one of the few guys that were around for the previous regime and Steve Howard coming in two years ago it was just announced earlier this week uh, that Steve Howard has signed an extension with the Austin Bruins how have the Bruins changed in just the last three years since you took your first steps on NAHL ice three years ago well I mean it's it's a this whole business and culture it's it's all built around winning if you don't win if you don't win games you're you're pretty much going to cease to exist you'll get eaten up and not, nothing nothing at all against um our for, former co- former coaches and people who used to be affili- affiliated with the organization because um you know they gave me the opportunity to come into this league and they uh you know and if if I didn't come here, maybe I would be done playing hockey right now. Maybe I wouldn't have had that opportunity. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity that they initially gave me to get me into this league. And then when things turned over to Coach Howard, and um, obviously we still have Keenan Kelly here too, and when Al Rooney was here last year, it was uh, there was instantly a different feeling that came that came with it. And it was the fact that it was going to be – you you were truly going to be in that next level. My first year here, again, no offense to the former regime, as you put it, but it uh, not a whole. It didn't feel a whole lot different from when I was playing in high school, and when Howard came in, there was a different level of accountability. You were definitely learning how to play the game a different way and more of a pro style. And they flat out said the way we play here and the way that the things that we teach you are going to be, it's going to be the same from here on out as you move up the ranks and that's produced wins that's produced more fans and it's just changed the the entire culture overall so i'm that's probably the biggest thing is this this, the the way the the different styles in coaching have been the difference biggest thing that i've noticed and then in turn it it uh, results in more wins 
as a defenseman, how much does it mean to you to be uh, brought up and coached by two defensemen alone? Do you think that makes it a little bit easier for you to do your job? Can you communicate with them a little bit better about where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do when you're talking film sessions and things along those lines? Is that communication pretty open with them both being former defensemen? Yeah, you know, with uh, Keenan Kelly, before he had his, uh, before he had his injury, uh, his injuries and surgeries. I know he, from what I've heard, he was a absolute stud coming up and was well, um, Wisconsin bound as a, a young guy. And obviously, Coach Howard played, Coach Howard played pro for multiple years yep. across a few continents. And having knowing that those guys were that high level of players, because you know not everyone is going to be a Scotty Bowman like situation where the guy right. didn't, where they didn't play any hockey, but they can still be a good coach. Especially because when it comes to junior hockey, it's not necessarily a coach's job to get you a division one scholarship it's a coach's job to give you the skills to be good enough to get a division one scholarship and you have a lot of faith behind two guys who played the game were really good at the game and in howard's instance and if coach kelly um, didn't have his injuries they both would have been paid to play the game and that that doesn't demand some respect but it commands some respect and so you have a lot of faith in the things they tell you and Especially once you get older, you uh, you're more receptive to the advice they give you. I think my first year, I was maybe a little <clears throat> not necessarily un um, unrece or unreceiving of it, but it's your second year, especially when you realize that hey, these guys know what they're talking about. They they played the game and they they played at a higher level than you have so far, and uh, so it's like I said, it's, uh, it's, you become much more receptive to it. And it's, so yeah, you have a lot of faith in the things that they say. Going the other direction, let's go a little bit on the lighter side. Let's talk a little bit about yourself. You're a northern Minnesota native just outside of Duluth from Twig, Minnesota, and you come from a hockey family. Your brother plays hockey as well. Um, talk to me a little bit about your early upbringings. How did you get involved in hockey? Was it just something that, you know, was kind of always there and was pretty much guaranteed, or did your family fall into it? Are you guys the first-generation hockey players? What was that like growing up? Well, my dad played in high school. He was more of a baseball and football guy, but he, he played, um, you know, he played varsity when he was in high school for Cathedral, actually, exactly where I went, the same place I went to high school. It's just called a different name. Um, so he played. Before that, though, um, nobody played. I have a cousin who plays that's um, on my dad's side. And it was just growing up in Duluth, especially with the UMD Bulldogs right there, you're going down to the Deck Arena all you know, every, every weekend. And it was always just something that it was expected. Then again, I remember when my dad took me to sign me up for uh hockey, ho just basically just general hockey sign up. And I remember crying cause I didn't want to, I think I was like <laughs> three, four years old. And it was just something that was always going to happen regardless. And I loved going to the, he would take me to he would take me to Mars Arena where I played high school and he would take me to skate, I think like every Friday on his lunch hour or something like that. And um my brother he did the same thing for and I I think it was just always the expectation that my brother and I were gonna play hockey. I know we loved going to the as it went on, we loved going to the rink, and we actually hated practicing indoors because the Zamboni guy would kick us off as opposed to staying out on the outdoor rinks and it uh, yeah, and from there I ended up playing for multiple youth organizations and working my way into high school, and that brings us to now. We're gonna get into your high school career in a little bit on the other side, but we first got to take a real quick commercial break. We're gonna come back in a couple seconds. T.J. Shalot joined by Lane Krenzen here in studio on a abbreviated edition of the Austin Bruins Show. Stay tuned. We got plenty more coming at you. This is the Austin Bruins Show on AM 1480 KAUS. Welcome back inside the Austin Bruins show here on AM 14A KAUS. TJ Shalott joined in studio by my guest co-host Lane Krenzen. We left off right before the break there talking a little about, about Lane and his uh, growing up and being a hockey player and how he got involved in the game of hockey. And Lane, you had mentioned your high school uh, right before we went to break as well. And one thing I noticed uh, just, you know, checking up on you when I started the season as well as now, you were a captain in high school as well. Does that leadership quality just kind of just manifest in you it's just something you're used to i mean i guess you i guess you could say that um you know my my dad being uh my dad being a business owner i think he uh i think a, a, that has a little bit to do with it you know i see how he how he carries himself how he acts how he deals with different people in different situations as 
kind of the spearhead of spearhead of the whole thing up in Duluth, and um, I think just base how that's how he was at work, and so obviously he was he was a little he was different at home, but some of those characteristics still carried over, and by you know you learn from watching your parents, so yeah, that's I think true. That, yeah, I think that's how it happened. Uh, one thing to to notice is you have a younger brother playing in the USHL, so I'm sure not only does he learn from your parents, but he probably also learns from you. How much mentoring do you do for your brother Nolan? Oh, I'd say plenty, whether it was unintentional or intentional. But you know, Nolan is I'm I'm Nolan's biggest supporter. I've he has turned into a fantastic player. He recently announced his commitment to play at Nebraska Omaha, and he he had this awesome benefit of when I was five years old when I was six years old when he was seven he was you know two three four five he was always at three years younger than me but he was still always going with me and occasionally I would have and so he was playing against older guys all the time and so he always had to get smart work a little harder and even recent even these past couple years when he's really began to take off there's this thing called the great skate during the summer in Duluth Minnesota and basically what it is is it's junior junior players like high level junior players college players d1 and d3 and guys who are playing pro hockey who are all from duluth minnesota who get together twice a week at again at my high school rink and we skate for an hour and we just scrimmage and it's a lot of the umd men's hockey team it's a lot of saints glasgow d3 guys it's guys who are playing in the nhl the khl the ahl and just all over the place and i always have them i always have them try to get them to come with me and at the time i was I was, you know, 16, 17, 18. I, I was at that rink, so I had the pleasure to play when I was a little bit younger just because I was always there. And he was he was 14, 15, he was 13, 14, 15, 16 also. And normally you don't play until you're at least 18 or 19 in that in that thing. And he was always going with, playing against college guys, playing against guys who have already played four years of juniors, have already played college, have already had a... They, they're paid to play the game, and he was coming. And it was rough for him sometimes, but he was able to play and against all of that awesome talent and that just always and he also played up a few years of youth hockey and that uh, I think that is part of the reason why his game has come along so far that and the fact that he's a very not not a whole lot gets to him he's very comfortable in his own skin he doesn't try to impress anybody he has his good group of friends and I think that confidence go can, um, carries over through his game and you mentioned that he uh, committed to Omaha, Nebraska. I think we we know somebody who's at Omaha. Nebraska. Yeah, we know no. Travis Cothenbeetle. I played with him the past two years here. Just kind of speaking to the legacy of the Austin Bruins, and we only have about three minutes left here, so I want to use this three minutes, and I want to talk to you about the town of Austin. You've been here for three years. You've been the team captain. You've done everything the right way on and off the ice. What does the town of Austin, what do the Austin Bruins mean to you, Lane Krenzen, as a player, as a person? I mean, I always, I've always wanted a tattoo in my life. Not sure when, or, when I'll get it or where I'll have it on, on myself, but I've always wanted to do something in Minnesota. And obviously, I'm from Duluth, and so I'll have Duluth on there. But I'm also going to have a star down by Austin. And it's funny because you come, to, I came down here the first time. And there wasn't much to see, and a lot of junior hockey communities don't necessarily have a lot to offer, whether it's how they're ran or where they're located or what's going on, but. I've been Austin has been very has been very very good to me and the people the relationships I've made the people I've lived with I mean most I've lived I've played for the same team for three years most people do not have the pleasure to say that they did that their entire junior career and just how engaged how supportive the community is of the Bruins how it, it's, it's you can't really I'm gonna say I can't I know I've been talking about it for a little bit but it's one of those things where you can't necessarily put it into words it's just a feeling that you get of openness and welcomeness and in this community and the support is just huge I mean it's we are there we are these people's Friday night we are their Saturday night because in reality there isn't a you know I guess unless you're of legal drinking age there's not a whole lot else to do in this town except come watch the Bruins and so we know we want to put a show on for them and they come out and they support us, so that means the world to me. And it's it's been a very pleasant three years here. As a non-native Austin person myself, I think it's safe to say that the town of Austin <clears throat> molds us as much as we really mold them too. So I think it, it's something to be said about that. It's a very blue. I mean, obviously there's some white collar, but it's a very blue collar community, and it just shows the hum, you know, the humbleness of people and people that didn't necessarily come from the most. I think it's actually my first build dad who taught me. It's uh, 
you know, you want to, um, you know, you don't have to always have to be wealthy with money as long as you live within your means and you're healthy in the mind. And it's just a very respectable way of life, and it's I, I've loved it. TJ Shalott joined in studio by Bruins defenseman and team captain Lane Krenzen. Lane, thank you so much for your time. we got to get cut out here in just a second as we hit the 6 o'clock hour. Twins Hot Stove is coming up next, but I want to get you guys all set up for the games this weekend. We have two of them on the road against the Bismarck Bobcats as second place, third place, and fourth place. Those seedings for the playoffs are, are wide open with the teams separated by just three standings points. Friday night's game, you can catch us on Hockey TV. Saturday on Hockey TV as well. Plus, Saturday night's game, you can catch on these very Airwaves, AM 1480 KAUS. Lane, thanks again for your time. I've got five seconds, so I'm gonna I'm not even gonna let you say anymore. We gotta get going. Thanks again, Lane, and everybody out there. We'll talk to you Friday night from Bismarck. Have a great one. The voice of Mower County. Download the free iHeart app or listen at myaustinminnesota.com. AM 1480 KAUS Austin. is a presentation of the Treasure Island Baseball Network. This is your weekly fix of everything Minnesota Twins with all